that there's some vitality, some joining, some knitting, the specific sense. So we should make him or her vital and join us, join with us as a group. Both of us should continue to contact other seeking saints and make them vital to join with us and to increase our group. And you know, in the ministry, just following what you see as a pattern in the Gospels is two or three. Just seek out the Lord. Lord, one other. And then you two, another. And then there's this a group of four. And then the ministry says, no more, no more. You, know, you see this in the... In the old, you see this in the Gospels. That there would be the vitality, there would be the care, and then there is the, what are we doing? It's for the Lord's move. So, and what is that move? Is to propagate, to spread the Lord's life, to bear remaining fruit. So we come to Roman number two, A vital group that is up to the standard revealed in the Bible has a purpose, a nature, and a condition. And that purpose of the vital groups in A is the increase, the perfecting and building up of the body of Christ. The vital groups are to gain the increase, finish the perfecting, and complete the building. So, saints... I just appreciate, even in this matter, the ministry presenting to us, what did they do in these vital groups? The first thing presented is purpose. And that purpose is to bear fruit. You know, why would why would not the first thing presented be nature, spiritual, or condition, love, loving one another, considering one another? Because... In my experience, that's a never-ending, never-perfected, never-completed area. I never feel we're loving the way I think we should love. <laughs> I never feel we're a spiritual, we're, uh, where we should be spiritual. Then uh, we just, we can just stay there in a rut. And it's, it's never-ending. But you know, all the problems are solved. When you have a baby, when a baby comes in, I don't care. That's fine with me. However you want to do it. So, you know, there's a a young, there was a young couple and uh, they had a child and, uh, you know, how do you raise this child? Spend time with the child, take care of the child. How do you? You hear this word balance. How do you balance this with the church life? Well, I need to take care of my child, do this, he needs to sleep, the schedule, there's a church, there's a prayer meeting, it's in the evening, I need to take so many problems, right? So many things. How do you balance? What's the balance? And this sister just wanted to spend time with her child, work, work long hours, and um, had difficulty uh, not being home. Until they had a spiritual baby that was just, you know, just, this baby's just hungry, hungry for the truth, hungry for Christ, hungry for the reality, hungry for Christ and what he's doing, hungry for God's economy. And then the sister would get off work late and call her husband, hey, could uh, you put can you put the baby to bed? Can you feed him? Can you bathe him? Can you take care of him? After work, I gotta go to this one's dorm. And uh, we're gonna get into some ministry. We're gonna get with some of our dorm mates. Say so many of our problems are because we don't have fruit. And we're not taking care of our children, our spiritual children. So many problems in the church are just automatically, so many problems in me with the saints, with my home meeting, with the leading brothers, <laughs> with the church meetings, are just automatically resolved. And I have a baby. 
we're called out of persons, matters, and things to focus in on God's economy when we have a spiritual child. So I just appreciate the purpose, where we start. The purpose is that we bear fruit. So, you know, we all, no one, I, I, I feel like no one here is like me and you want to remain the way you are. <laughs> I don't want to be the way I am. I want the Lord to transform me, to grow in me, to spread in me, to gain me. I do. I, I feel like we all, every good Christian, abhors himself, right? As Job says, right? When he sees him, now I abhor myself, right? The more we see him, the more we abhor ourselves. Yes, that is true. But, so we get stuck here in Matthew 13, right? The heart. The hardness, the worldly traffic, the hidden things no one knows about, the choking of the life through the anxieties of the age, the deceitfulness of riches. And we can get stuck in Matthew 13, dealing with that heart. But you know where the Lord is, where he can deal with it. In John 15, he's the husbandman. You know what husbandman means? It means the tiller of the ground. You know where he can till and deal with that heart? And with all the problems of the heart? When we're taking care of bearing fruit in John 15. In that context, then the tiller of the ground has the room and the way to deal with the hardness and to deal with the hidden things. When I'm speaking with a young one, oh, that shining is intense the other way too. <laughs> and I walk out, Lord Jesus, save me. I repent for what I told my wife this morning. Lord, I'm so sorry. Right, as we're just feeding, 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 it just it goes both ways. And the tiller is breaking, tilling, opening. Why? That it would not just have fruit, but remaining fruit, abundant fruit. That's where the Lord begins to operate. But when we're in introspection and dealing with it, it's so hard. It seems so hard to break out. So, so it starts with purpose, right? And that calls us out of everything. And working alongside us is the husband and tilling the ground for his purpose. What are you doing it for? That, that you would just be a precious, transformed little plot of land? No, that there would be fruit there on that little plot of land. And the Lord is so active there and so precious there and so precise there to deal with, with what needs to be dealt with that there would be remaining fruit. And so we just need to take our eyes off of us and just look away. Look away and enjoy him and be joined to another that what we would bear fruit. And of course, how do we bear fruit? Well, B, the nature of the vital groups is spiritual. To be spiritual means to be filled with the Holy Spirit within and without. So in Cincinnati, we don't have very many older saints. We have a lot of younger ones. That ones we that migrated there, young working ones, uh, ones we gained off the campus. And um, we, you know, we have fellowshipping. You just have to start. You don't have the older patterns, the older saints there. It has to start with you. You you find a companion. You find another one. And then when you find that companion, someone needs to break through. Right? When you have a companion, you're young. <laughs> I don't know. I found it hard. I didn't want to be the, the spiritual one with my best friend. I came off the campus, I got saved. I had a dynamic salvation. And my best friend, uh, I heard the gospel to my best friend. 
and he came into the church life. And then I had two best friends I went to college with. They both got saved and came into the church life, and then they brought me in. And we were these three companions, three amigos. And, and yet I still remember one day I'm uh, on the phone with his older brother praying. And he's, he's, I'm learning to pray. And he says, repeat after me, Lord Jesus. He said, Lord Jesus. And he said, Lord Jesus. And just then, my friend, my, my best friend in the Lord. Now, we're on the church life. He walks in. And I said, Lord Jesus. <laughs> and he says, oh, oh, and he closed the door. He walked out, <laughs> left me in there. Uh, so that I can pray. And then the boldness came back. Lord, Jesus! <laughs> but the Lord had to break through. And so he used my friend. You know, we never, we known each other for years. We grew up in the same neighborhood in Houston, went to college together. And you know, it was really striking. We never argued. Never. Never had an argument. 